You're so, welcome. Modok has <laughs> appeared in four different animated series that I'm aware of. And kind of the reason we're doing Modok is he's about to come out in a new series. And we watched the trailers for it. The future is Modok! Modok! And do you know what Modok stands for? Mental organism designed only for killing. <laughs> for killing. And it looks pretty good. Welcome back to They Call Me Uncle. Today we're going to be talking about Modok, the merciless Modok. The man of many letters <laughs> <laughs> and dangly features. <laughs> yes. Right. His weakness is being on his back. <laughs> like a turtle or tortoise. Okay, Carter, where was he created? <laughs> ah, yes. Modoc came into being in Tales of Suspense 93, as seen before me. Came out in September 1967. He was created by the terrible twosome of Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. Now, my introduction to Modoc. Uh, Modoc's been around, like Carter just said, since 1967. Now, I've always... Th- MODOK is an acronym, which stands for Mental Organism Designed Only for Killing. Uh, My guess is they made up the name and backed their way into an acronym. Because if you read Tales of Suspense 93 and 94, which is his first appearance, they never tell you it's an acronym. And also, MODOK was created by AIM, Advanced Idea Mechanics. Now, if you've seen Iron Man 3, they're actually mentioned, and there's a, oh, there's some kind of building with AIM on the side of it. So AIM's been around even longer. They're always the guys in the yellow hazmat suits, and they're kind of the equivalent of Hydra. And so uh, MODOK's first appearance in this issue, um, they, MODOK, is mentioned, and he's only seen one time, and he's just a face on a blurry screen, but all of the AIM agents are terrified. Now, this Tales of Suspense, um, there's two stories in the Tales of Suspense. One's an Iron Man story, which actually had to do with Titanium Man, and the other one was a Captain America story. So Captain America has developed a crush on Sharon Carter, Agent 13, She's been captured while infiltrating AIM, and so Captain America shows up on the submarine, immediately gets captured, and they keep uh, doing this foreshadowing about this MODOK. Maybe we should have said menacing MODOK. Not merciless. Mm. So, yeah, he's more merciless than menacing. I mean, look at him. (laughs) So, (laughs) so dangly. Yeah. (laughs) Dangly. (laughs) It's like a Christmas ornament. (laughs) (laughs) He would be a great Christmas ornament. So so after Captain America and Agent 13 of S.H.I.E.L.D. are captured, uh, in the next issue, they actually meet MODOK in person. And it's interesting because uh, MODOK isn't necessarily defeated by Captain America or Agent Carter, not Carter. Agent Carter? Yeah, Agent Carter. Agent Carter. That is her name. I know, but I'm mixing her up with the one from the earlier. But anyway, Agent 13, we'll call her that. Wait, Agent 13 and Agent Carter are the same person? Well, it's Sharon Carter. Who's Agent Carter in the Captain America movies? I like her grandniece. Yeah. Or, no, this is her grandma. Yeah. Is that mixing the pot? <laughs> is <laughs> now. The pot. Is now. <laughs> So, in the next step, we finally see Modoc in his full form, and... In all that stubbly glory, yeah. <laughs> and, and while Captain America and Agent 13 are distracting him, the AIM agents come in and shoot him. Shoot and Captain, so, or... No, Modoc. they shoot Modoc because... He's a big target. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's all headshot he's there. He's <laughs> all headshot. So, no, they. the first thing he did after he was created was took over AIM. And they didn't like it. They wanted to be free of him. Mm-hmm. And so uh, 
I actually pulled this uh, Captain America. This is Captain America 133. And this is from January. I didn't remember the year. January 1971. Now I grabbed this because in addition to talking about the comics, we usually have something, you know, art-wise. And this was the first cover where Modoc is on the cover that I could find. And also, interesting, the guy in green is Falcon. This was shortly after Falcon started being a character and hanging out with Captain America. And so Modoc was on the cover, and inside they tell his origin story, which was kept really simple. Uh, AIM is always run by the Scientist Supreme, and he has him grab one of the random hazmat suit guys, and he puts him in this machine for 24 hours to expand his brain and make him into a living weapon. And so after 24 hours, Modoc's head, you know, has grown and he's turned into this monster, kind of. Uh, the first thing he did was kill the Scientist Supreme and take over AIM. Reasonable. Yeah. And so Modoc's powers are really kind of... They not... microwaved him. <laughs> in a nuke. <laughs> kind of. They nuked him. Um, so yeah. Modoc's powers, he has this thing on his head... I don't know what you'd call it, but he fires mental blasts out of it. Tiara. He can... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> call it what it is. kind of a tiara. <laughs> he can also freeze people. He can... He, he has all kinds of psionic abilities. Um, his weakness is he's, he's like a T-Rex. Got a little short arms <laughs> and legs. Kind of dangly. He's on a floaty chair. Always reminds me of... Uh, Wally. Wally. <laughs> He's a fat guy in a floaty chair. Oh. So. I never finished Wally. Yes, yeah, Steven. We never got to finish Wally. <laughs> <laughs> but in this comic is where they spell out what the acronym for MODOK is. So when it comes to MODOK collectibles, there is a Hero Clicks MODOK. There's also a Marvel Legends action figure MODOK, but you had to assemble it from. All these other action figures, and I didn't end up with any of those. He would make an excellent bobblehead. Yeah, he would. That'd be awesome. Probably already is. Uh, like, on one of those, like, trucks. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I would wear, not even a truck, I'd, I'd rock that. Yeah. I had Buddha in my car for two years. I know, I love that thing. So, uh, since I didn't have a MODOK collectible, I hit up my son James, and there is a website called Thingverse. And on Thingverse, they have 3D printer uh, models that you can download for free. You can donate to the site, and you can also tip the person that created the model. And so I found a Modoc one. There were actually four, and I picked out the one I liked the most. And I had James. I told him I wanted it scaled up, and he said that a... a bigger scale one could take anywhere from 24 to 38 hours. And so when you're going to invest that much time in your 3D printer running, 3D printers are very temperamental. Ooh. And so James did a test run. And so this little guy who looks like a building, yeah, he, that took about six hours to print this. And what you're seeing around the sides of it and the edges are supports. So some of the supports are in the model, and some James had to add himself. Like Modoc's feet uh, kind of hang out over the chair. Dangle. Dangle. Dangle, yeah. <laughs> Let's call it what it is. I was trying to avoid saying that. I don't know why. So it has to print these supports to get out to the feet. And so... We wanted to show you this, and then through the magic of time-lapse photography, <laughs> we're going to have James clean this model up so that you can see what the small-scale model looks like. And then when we do this again, we'll show you a larger scale that we're going to have Mason print. Okay, paint. Paint, not print. Yeah, I don't know how to print things. That's yeah. true. 
I don't know how to paint things. Not very well. So thanks to the magic of time-lapse photography and video editing, we can now show you the final version after James has cleaned it up. Extreme close-up. <laughs> magic shots. Oh. So, uh, like I said, this took about six hours to print. Took James about fifteen minutes to clean up, and it, uh, it gives him a lot of information. So when we print a bigger scale one, it could take you know like thirty hours. We won't waste any time or material. This is uh, printed with filament. Uh, the other types of three D prints use resin. You use resin if you want to do miniatures. You do filament if it's going to be a bigger scale or a bigger space. And so this is a filament print. Cool. I did not know that. It's so cute. And it's surprisingly detailed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's impressive. Dang. Yeah. It's even got a little claw hand. It's got <laughs> fingers. Yeah. <laughs> little claw fingers. Yeah. That's cool. It's cool. No. All right. So, you know what would be cool? If you made a chessboard of, like, Ooh, there's, characters. There's some that are specifically for chess. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Because those those look like chess pieces. Oh, yeah. mm, I wonder what he'd be. Uh, Bishop. Yeah. 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 So, Modoc has appeared in a number of video games, both as a playable character and as a non-playable character or a boss. Um, the one at the top of my list, which is also the first time I played a game with Modoc in it, was Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And he uh, was a boss in one of the levels. And what made it really different battling Modoc was when you entered the room, he used his mental abilities to freeze all of the players. So there were four of us, Wilson, Endo, Matt, and myself. And so we were froze, and then he asked trivia questions. Now, if they're comic book trivia questions, I've got that down cold. But they were a mix of science and trivia. But between the four of us, it was really easy. So we blew through the questions, threw Modoc a beat down. Yeah, and took and, his lunch money. <laughs> and then pounded the random hazmat-wearing AIM agents. And that game, you know, is at the top of my list because a five on my scale means I played it and it played everything about it. And on the Xbox, uh, well, that was the first time I'd played it, and I played it all the way through multiple times, and that's why it sits at the top of the list. So to introduce these guys to Modoc in a in some kind of video tonight, we watched Iron Man the animated series episode one hundred six, or season one episode six. The Enemy Within, something like that. I claim sanctuary! Mordor! I have defected. I am here to serve you. I picked it because it shows you Modoc and it tells his origin story, and we wanted to compare that with the comic book. And so we watched it and did a review, and that... 90s, 1994 Iron Man is, is definitely not one of my favorite animated versions, but it shows you a lot of characters, and it's entertaining. And But they told MODOK's origin, they really changed it. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have him created by AIM, they had him created by... Santa Claus. <laughs> a balding yeah. Santa Claus. They had him created by the Red Ghost. Red Ghost, yeah. And they had him created in <laughs> Russia. Uh, some kind of Russian department of something, and the Red Ghost, who I don't even think spoke during the whole thing. No, in it, flashback. Yeah. Entirely flashback. Yeah, it was all flashbacks. It was really kind of odd, because in the comics, he was created by AIM, directed by the Scientist Supreme, and in this, the Red Ghost created him, 
And he was slowly changing, so he had time to fall in love with this really hot girl. A Russian like, or, or ballerina. Mary, a Russian ballerina. Slash supermodel. <laughs> that the Red Ghost was in love with. And the Red Ghost... Uh, Out of jealousy. He turned him dosage. He does <laughs> look like a bald Santa Claus. And out of pure jealousy, Red Ghost turned him into Mr. Potato Head, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> now, it was funny because we were talking about, you know, and, and Modoc is a <laughs> Mr. Potato Head. That will never get out of there. <laughs> will never leave yours either. You're so, welcome. <laughs> Modoc has appeared in four different animated series that I'm aware of. And kind of the reason we're doing Modoc is he's about to come out in a new series. And we watched the trailers for it. The future is MODOK! MODOK! And do you know what MODOK stands for? Mental organism designed only for killing. Ah! For killing. Yeah, it looks pretty good. They are doing it as a comedy. Uh, they definitely had AIM in there. You saw the hazmat guys in yellow. And it's fortunately animated because it would be horrifying live action. <laughs> well, we were talking about if you wanted to do it live action, who would it, it could be terrifying. And I was telling him, I think you got to get Cronenberg because he does body horror like nobody else. <laughs> and just think Scanners. <laughs> If you haven't scanners. seen Scanners, if you've seen Scanners, that opening scene, head exploding, that's exactly the kind of creepiness I would expect. Uh, Modoc, during his origin story, actually disintegrates two guys with his mind. And yes. they make his powers kind of limitless. But then uh, they, they kind of treat him like a... a, a comedic character so it's because how can you not uh, it's the dangling legs i know <laughs> his feet never touch the ground pretty much a pinata <laughs> <laughs> yep. poor guy so is there anything you wanted to say about watching the show like that was a blast from the past like just I was trying to see it as like the Iron Man show, trying to dissociate it from Modoc himself, but that show did not age well. <laughs> like War Machine calls somebody Turkey at one point, <laughs> which was old even in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. Speaking from my personal experience, as I am three thousand years old. <laughs> yeah, I was there. I like cartoons. Me too. There are animations. Um, that's about it. There, I don't know. It was kind of funny. The CGI. Um, oh, that's so bad. <laughs> the, the 3D animation. The only people I feel like who got 3D animation right in animation is Futurama. But that's just my own personal opinion. Yeah. Like, there's a reason for it. Like, it's to animate things that are really difficult to draw, like moving vehicles and such. Yeah, and it'd be a lot more expensive for animators yeah. to draw all that. Yeah, it's, it still drives me nuts. Now, one of the other things we always do is we do some casting or we pick a theme song, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, of course, nobody is shaped like Modoc. It would take special effects, but I had somebody in mind that I would base Modoc's face on. Me too. Um, Me too. But I gotta look it up because I couldn't remember his name. He's actually a really good actor. He was on Dark Shadows for the original Dark Shadows. The original Dark Shadows for pretty much the whole run. Oh, thank God! I thought you were gonna pick mine. Oh, no. if I... I worry about that every holy time. Holy hell. I would be... <laughs> Thayer David. Sweet. Thayer David's face, if they were to CGI it and make it bigger... He was in Rocky. <laughs> I didn't know he was in Rocky. But I... Thayer that David... That picture's perfect. When, you, when he first was on Dark Shadows, I didn't like him much or something, but... He plays a whole bunch of different characters, and he is really good. 
But yeah, you can see where you could take that face and make it into a yep. Modoc. So that's my pick. Thayer David. Thayer David. Carter, <laughs> I know you got a pick. You always I do. I panicked because I <clears throat> didn't know what we were doing tonight. So I panicked and just Googled it. And the consensus that every that the internet reached and I agree with is Burn Gorman. You don't know the name, but you will know the face. It's a very punchable face, but he is a great actor on his own. You will know him from Pacific Rim, Man in oh, High Castle. Yep. Yeah, I know who he is. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I do not know who he is. Batman, uh, Dark Knight Rises. Uh, he's always like the supporting character. He's like... Yeah. He, he reminds me of Jeffrey Coombs. They should play brothers. <laughs> All right, Mason. Take note, Hollywood. Whose face would you put on? Modo. You know the one. Oliver Tree. Oliver Tree. He's he's a musician. He um, songwriter, and yeah, yeah he go. sports the haircut. Oh yeah, just and, his headshots. Oh, the one you <laughs> shot. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. He looks like he should be in Devo. It screams Modoc. <laughs> yeah, just look at him. He's even got the color yes. palette. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It works so well. Just Bing images. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so like I said earlier, we we covered Modoc because there is a new series coming out. And so once that new series comes out and we've had time to review it's a short, you know, it's a half-hour sitcom, so you get 20 minutes of material. Once we've had time to review the first four, then we'll come back, do a new panel, and tell you how that MODOK lines up with the source material that was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Oh, why four episodes? Because <clears throat> 20 minutes a piece gives you 80 minutes when you put them on a scoreboard. 80-minute mm -hmm. minimum. Eight, yeah, 75 minute minimum because Dracula was ah. 75 minutes. Yes. And uh, so we're going to come back to MODOK. And I also saw that uh, Wonder Man is going to be voiced by Nathan Fillion, which is really interesting mm. because there's an urban myth, or allegedly, I don't know what the word is. Allegedly, there's a skeleton allegedly, on it. They filmed Nathan Fillion as Wonder Man for the Avengers Ooh. movies and didn't use it or it got cut. So it's kind of surprising that, or not surprising, that he's showing up in this new show voicing Wonder Man. Now, I haven't seen that in a trailer. I just read it. And they're also going to do the Super Adaptoid, which is a villain. And so... Um, those are a couple other characters that we can talk about uh, once we've seen how they did it. Uh, Impress us. Yeah. I hope it's good. I think it would be fun to uh, see him do it right and uh, do something we really like. So that's it for me. So yeah, you can watch MODOK on Hulu. And if you want to watch more of us, we're here on YouTube. So, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's cool too. Um, here's some other clips of stuff. Yeah, check out that clip. It was a nice yeah, clip. Look at that. <laughs> this is my favorite clip. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, thanks for hanging out with us. And we'll catch you next time.